we definitely have some capes up here. Hey guys, we're back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild and I'm Lady Legend. Today we're going to be doing part one of the newly updated Savannah Super Guide. Today we're going to be going over best loadout for Savannah and everything you need to know to hunt these four species. Today we're going to cover Cape Buffalo, Lions, Gemsbok, and Blue Wildebeest, and the other five species will come along in part two of the Savannah Super Guide. What we're gonna go over in today's video, guys, is max level, best weapons, diamond trophy ratings, max weights, best times, best collars, common and rare variations for each species, and of course, at the end of every segment, I will share a hotspot map with you, showing you exactly where you will find every species since the February 22nd update. And everything has changed in Savannah. All of their zone times have changed, all of their hotspot locations, they are in totally different places now. Today's guide should definitely help you hunt a lot easier in updated Savannah. Now, if you do enjoy today's video, guys, or learn anything at all, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing, smash that like button, it is super amazing for the algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. So thanks guys for that, and we're gonna head right into it. Okay guys, this is my best loadout for hunting in Savannah. So I always take with me the 300 canning magnum, and that is for lions, Gemsbok, and for Cape Buffalo. Then I have with me the Virant 22, and I have selected that over the Zarza 22 for the simple reason that it does have 10 shots. It makes that much of a difference to me, and that is for scrub hair. And then we do have the Zarza 308, but any 4 to 8 rifle will do just fine. You can use the 30 odd 6, the 303, the M1, whatever you're preferences, but I have selected the 308 because it is super amazing. So the 308 is going to be for Wildebeest, Lesser Kudu, and Warthogs. Then we do have the Zarza 223, and that is going to be for Springbok and for Sidestripe Jackal. And just because we're in Savannah, I like to take the Rhino, and I am taking the brand new free edition, which is the Sunbird 454. Now this is awesome for when you are getting attacked by aggressive capes. Now I want to mention before we go on here, guys, that I do have an extra three kilograms worth of storage capacity because I do have the pack mule skill. This is an amazing skill that I do highly recommend because you don't make any additional sound so you aren't spooking any of your max level animals away so that is why I have an extra three kilograms worth of space here. Now I always carry all of my ammo with me. It weighs so little that I don't ever even take it off me and then we do have the antler rattler and that is for lesser kudu and for gemsbok. We have the snorwee's collar and that's for springbok, blue wildebeest, lesser kudu and it doesn't list here, but it works amazing on Gemsbok as well. It works every time, guys. Give it a shot. Then we do have the Jackrabbit Collar, and that is for Side Stripe Jackal and for Lions. Now, because the Jackrabbit Collar does work for Lions, I'm not going to bother wasting space, but you can also use the Predator Distress Fawn Collar, but there really isn't a need because the Jackrabbit Collar does work for both Jackals and for Lions, so I don't have to waste space on the Distress Fawn Collar. And then, of course, I do have my Wild Boar collar and that is for warthogs. Now you always want to have your first aid kit here with you in Savannah because the capes go aggressive quite a lot. Then I do have my apex view and my gen zero binoculars and that is just about maxing me out. That brings me to 22.88 kilograms. So that is my loadout for Savannah. And we do have a really nice ape mythical beauty right up there. as well and it doesn't look like I got a new no. how about that shot the capes are tanks you basically need a broadside shot with a 300 on a cape and you really do need to aim low or the 300 is just not going to penetrate it just like what we saw right here now the cape drink time has slightly changed they now drink here in savannah from 9 until 12 or 12 30 and they just have the one drink time so they actually are now all along the coast most of these zones are cape zones so they drink all the way around the coast not so much down in this corner but all the way around but they are not going to be on the west side of the coast. Now they still are at some of the bottom lakes, but they are no longer at this lake right here, which was their very best spot on the map. You will still find them in the inlet up here. Cape Buffalo are a class nine species. 
So as such, you can use the 300 on them. You can use the 7 mil if you are going the non-DLC route. You, you also can use the Rhino, which is awesome for those close-up cape shots. The King 470 is great on aggressive capes. It's just not great with long distance shots because of the scope that it has. It's not the greatest scope, but man, is it powerful for aggressive capes. Now, max weight for Cape Buffalo is 950 kilograms or 2,094 pounds. Now, it is handy to have your dog with you because if he is programmed right, he will bark to warn you that you are getting attacked by an aggressive cape or any aggressive animal. That was not a good shot. Are you fleeing? You chicken! Now, there are no collars for Cape Buffalo. Unfortunately, so there is no way to lure them in. Now, this isn't a great angle either. Now, Cape Buffalo do go to nine legendary, and that is what you're looking for when you are looking for a diamond. I have never seen an eight mythical cape go diamond ever. Jaxie says, it could be possible, but if it is, it is going to be extremely, extremely rare. Now, there are three common variations for Cape Buffalo, which include black, gray, and brown, but if you are looking for a rare, they also come in leucistic and an albino, both of which are considered to be very rare with a less than 0.1% spawn rate. And we did get that one. And he is a 134.9 gold. If you are looking for a diamond cape, they do go diamond at 151.3. And that was the shot we got right there. So this is where we are right here on the coast. And we have been shooting a few. Basically, it's a run that you can do. It really does make life a lot easier. And what I would do, guys, is put tents intermittently along the coast so that you can recheck for your respawns without having to do the entire run. I also wanted to mention, guys, that these super guides are part of the series. I do have a super guide made for every single reserve in Call of the Wild. I am in the process right now of updating them. Some of them are getting a little long in the tooth and do need to be updated, but you will find a hotspot guide for every single species in those super guides, and I will leave the link for all of those videos in the description below. And that brings us to the map. So to date, guys, I have found around 55 drink zones for Cape Buffalo. And as you can see, most of them are around the edge of the map. Now, you won't have the exact same zones as me, but you definitely should have very similar zones. So that definitely should help you to find your Cape zones. And all of these hotspot maps, guys, I do post to my Discord for you guys to easily reference. And I will leave the link below the video. The next species we're going to have a look at for today's guide, guys, is lions. Now, lions drink here in Savannah from 12 until 15 or 15 30 so their drink time did not change with the last update but their locations definitely did. Now lions are a class 9 species so my preferred weapons for lions include the 300 that is what I use the most. You can also use the 338. The rhino is awesome on lions but you do have to get closer and you can use the king 470 on lions as well. They live for quite a while before they drop and flat, beautiful. You are tracking lions and you are looking for a diamond. Their max weight is 270 kilograms or 595 pounds. That is the track that you're looking for. Now for collars for lions, there are two different collars that will work for them, being the Predator Jackrabbit collar and the Predator Distress Fawn collar. Now you can get away with just using the Jackrabbit collar because it also works for side striped jackals. So that eliminates the need to carry two collars. And there he is, the king of the jungle. So we do have a gold here, 45.7. So if you are looking for a diamond, 48.5 is the trophy rating that you need to hit. And that is a tan. So the common color variations actually include tan and light brown. And they actually have three rare variations. All are considered to be very rare. And they are dark brown, blonde, and albino with less than 0.1% spawn rate. So they're all very rare. And this is where we found this zone right here. So all these little lakes, a lot of them will still have lions. This lake up here is absolutely amazing for lions now. And we never used to have lions here. Let's check it out. There's a lion already and we just left the outpost. I actually have three drink zones on this lake for lions. And I do believe that there can even be more than that on this lake. It really is a great hotspot for lions now. And I do have a zone down here, but I don't see any yet. Oh, there's one. Might have been, oh, I got him. I got him. 
I have a hard time telling when they are blonde or light brown, and that's probably just me. So he is also a tan, and that guy is just a 43.4. So this lake is absolutely amazing for lions now since the last update. And that does bring us to the map. So I have put everywhere where I have found a lion drink zone since the update. Now the Twin Lakes has lots of lions and so does the main lake on the left hand side. But the top middle lake that never used to have lions seems to be the best spot on the map for lions now. There are males in every single zone and that is an awesome spot. The next species for today's guide is Gemsbok. Now Gemsbok have a brand new drink time since Savannah has been updated. They now drink from three until six or 6.30. So if you wanna hunt them in their drink zone, you have to do it in the dark now. So that is kind of unfortunate, but that is just the way it is. Before the update, this lake down here was insanely hot for Gemsbok and that is no more sadly guys. That amazing hotspot is gone. So this lake right here, this large lake on the left of the map, this is probably the best lake for Gemsbok. Every single one of these drink zones is Gemsbok except for this one down here. So I have seven drink zones on this lake alone. Female diamond Gemsbok used to be one of the most common diamonds in the game, but just this time change alone is going to make them a lot harder. Now Gemsbok are a class 8 species, so best weapons to use. I like to use the 300, you can use the 338, but because they're class 8, you can use any 4 to 8 rifle if you so choose. So you can use the 308, the 30 odd 6, the M1, but the 300 is the best for me. Now Gemsbok go to level 5. Level 5 is what you're looking for if you are looking for a diamond, but females and males can both make diamond, and they can at level 4. At least the females can, I'm not sure about the males. <laughs> and that one is so small, it, I don't even think it has any horns. So that's a need zone indicator. This zone here has six Gemsbok in it. Okay, so I just moved over to this small lake. So a lot of these little lakes in the center of the map will still have drinking Gemsbok, but I will show you exactly where you'll find them in the hotspot map just shortly. Jeez, that's a level three. That looks like a big one to me, but that is only a level three, so they can get very, very big. Let's take one down, shall we? Now you can tell the difference just from looking at a Gemsbok, whether it is male or female, just from looking at their horns. Males go into a V pattern and the females have parallel horns. Here is our three, 306.3, that's pretty, Pretty nice Gemsbok for a level three. There are two collars for Gemsbok, which are the Antler Rattler, and actually the Buck Snortwees collar does work for them as well, even though it isn't listed. Now this is a light gray. Light gray and gray are their only common variations, and then there are three different rare variations for Gemsbok. Dark, beige, and gold, all which are considered to be very rare with a less than 0.1% spawn rate. And if you are looking for a diamond, they go diamond at 337.5. And their max weight track is 240 kilograms or 529 pounds. So this is where we are right here. And that brings us to the map. So the bottom left hand corner, which used to be the very best spot for drinking Gemsbok, no longer has Gemsbok there, but you will find them around most of these center lakes. But the new best lake for Gemsbok is this lake on the east side of the map. I have five, sometimes six drink zones at that lake. The next species for today's guide is Blue Wildebeest. Now, Blue Wildebeest have a brand new drink time since the last update, and they now drink from 6 until 9 or 9.30. So they no longer drink in the dark, which is very, very nice. They're a lot easier to hunt since the update. Now, Gold Wildebeest are no longer uncommon, guys. They are now a common fur variation, so you will be seeing a lot of them. Now, Wildebeest go to level 5. They definitely can make diamond at level 4 and level 5. I have probably killed more level 4 diamonds than level 5 diamonds. Now their max weight is 290 kilograms or 639 pounds. So if you do see a max weight level 4, definitely kill it. It could definitely be a diamond. And there's another zone there. So when you are picking through the herds, guys, look for a crowned wildebeest. They are rare with approximately a 1% spawn rate. They are not easy to find and they only come in female. So we are at the Twin Lakes here and I have two drink zones here for Wildebeest. Look at this guys, look at all the Gemsbok. This just really shows what an amazing lake. This is where we are right now. This lake is insane for Gemsbok, but it also is really good for Wildebeest. 
and they're just starting to come in right now. So unfortunately, that is not a max weight four, but that is the one we're gonna take right now. Wildebeest are actually a class six species, so you can use any four to eight rifle when you are hunting wildebeest. You can use the 308, the 30 odd six, the M1, the 303, any four to eight will do just fine. Now, if you are bow hunting them, good luck, they are tough, but you can use 420 green arrows and their collar is the Snortwee's collar. We'll take two. So I'm using the 308 here. Now I mentioned earlier that crown wildebeest are rare. Well, there is one other rare variation for wildebeest and that is albino, which are considered to be very rare with a less than 0.1% spawn rate. So this guy is a four, 35.6, 37.6 is diamond. So gold, gray, and dark gray are their common variations. And that's just a level two. And they don't pay too bad, about $900 for that one. So here we are. I wish they would name these lakes, but this is the lake we're at right here. I actually recommend putting two tents on this lake because it is such a huge lake. And that brings us to our final map for today's video. Now the main lake on the left side of the map, that is also an amazing lake for wildebeest. This lake right here has four zones, but you will find wildebeest drinking at most of the lakes in the center of the map. That is gonna round up part one of the Savannah Super Guide, and in part two, guys, we will cover Warthog, Lesser Kudu, Springbok, Sidestripe Jackal, and Scrub Hare. And I really hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I hope you learned lots. If you did, guys, take a sec and hit that like button. It is super amazing for the algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. And that's gonna wrap it up for this one, and we will definitely see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.